Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Diet Reverse Recovery. Let me start off with a description of a PN diet, uh, say a silicon PN diet. We have here two sections, the N-type part and the P-type part, and in between we have the junction. When there is a current in the forward direction, this is the forward direction, there will be a charge stored in this uh, junction area. Okay, as long as there is a current, there is a charge here, which helps to transfer the uh, charge carriers from one side to another. Now, if I'll change the direction of the current abruptly, that is, I'll force the current in the reverse direction, okay? As long as there is a charge in the junction, there will be still a current flowing. That is, you can have a reverse current in a diode as long as you have charge carrier. However, uh, once the current is reversed, these charge carriers are actually swept out of the junction. You'll get a depletion layer and then the current will stop. This process of reverse current and then the recovery that is how this current is actually going back to zero, is indeed this uh, reverse recovery phenomena uh, of a diode that we are going to talk about. Now, where do we find this situation? Well, let's take, for example, a boost PWM converter. We have an inductor, a diode, a transistor, and an output section. And in the off state of the transistor, that is when the transistor is non-conducting here, there will be a current flowing through the inductor and the diode. This is a forward current, and it will be, of course, uh, going to the output section. Now, once the transistor is in the on state, here it is, there is a short here, um, it'll show the inductor, but at the same time, as you'll see here, there is a reverse voltage imposed on this circuit. And this loop now has a negative voltage imposing on the diode. So we can see it here more clearly. The transistor is short. We have a positive voltage here, and there is a current now that will go this direction. First, of course, the forward current will die out, will decrease, and then we'll have a short period of time in which there, you will have a reverse current. Okay, so this is this reverse current that you'll find in this uh, boost converter as soon as the transistor is turned on. Okay, when this is short here, you will have this reverse current. Now, this phenomena is not limited to the boost converter. In fact, any PWM converter will have this problem because any PWM converter is based on this generic cell which has this inductor, diode, and switch. In the case of a boost, this is ground here, and this is the input, and this is the output. In the case, say, of a buck converter, this is the input, this is the output, and this is ground. So any topology of PWM, you'll have this uh, situation of a reverse current. In fact, you'll have it also in a isolated topologies like a uh, full bridge, say, PWM converter, and I'm showing here a uh, half bridge rectifier. In this case, um, if, say, the upper diode is conducting, this is in the forward direction, but then as this voltage here is reversed, we'll have a reverse voltage on this loop here, and consequently the current uh, forward current will sort of decrease and eventually you'll have a reverse current. So this phenomenon is really widespread and you'll find it in many situations. Now the characterization of the reverse recovery phenomena is given usually by this graph. Okay, uh, we are talking about the situation that you have a reverse voltage on this loop, shown here more clearly. And what we see in this graph, which has here this axis is current, and this is time, we see here the forward current. This is the current that was flowing through the diode just before the short uh, occurred. Here is uh, the reverse voltage imposed, and now the current is starting to 
decrease with a certain DIDT. Now this slope here, the IDT, has nothing to do with the dial. It is a function of the voltage and the inductances in this loop. Now whatever you do, there will always be some stray inductance. So there will always be some slope here in which this current is decreasing. The current is decreasing, it's approaching zero, and then it goes actually to the reverse direction. This is negative current now and then it'll reach some peak value, peak reverse current value, and it'll start dying out. This is the reverse recovery, okay? Associated with it, we have a certain amount of charge, of course, and as this current is dying to 10%, uh, up to this point, this is the definition, just a formal definition of the reverse recovery time. So reverse recovery time is defined from the time that the current is reversing, up to 10% of the peak reverse value. This is the reverse time. We have Q, which is another parameter. So the, here are the parameters. We have the uh, reverse recovery time. We have the charge and the IDT is very important. If, for example, the inductances will be smaller, this slope will be steeper. And in fact, the current will reach a much larger value. This is the peak current will be much larger if the IDT is uh, faster. So this graph is dependent on the operating point and the condition of the circuit that was used to measure it. So for a different forward current to begin with, you will have a different value here, here or here. And for different um, inductances, you'll have a different DIDT. And the vendors should give, and they usually do, information what, what happens to this time and the peak value when the IDT is actually changing. Now, another sensitivity which is very important to realize is to t temperature. As the temp temperature goes up, the time of the reverse recovery is becoming larger and the peak value is also becoming larger. So this is very important to realize because the diode will uh, heat up and the temperature will go up. So you have to worry about what happens at high temperature. Now another point uh, to make is that associated with this phenomena is of course some power loss because you have charges coming off here in this uh, loop and of course there is a average current. Average current is the charge time frequency and times the voltage you have power. So this is the amount of power that is actually associated with this phenomena. And for example if you have 400 volt 250 nanocolon of Q which is pretty good for a 10 amp uh, diode and say 100 kilohertz you have a 10 watt. So it's not zero, uh, it's a, a certain value you have to take into account. Now where does this power go? Well, not to the transistor because transistor is shorted and usually the voltage across it is much lower than the total voltage so the amount of power dissipated here is small. Same thing goes for the diode. The diode has the same voltage drop when in the forward current situation or the reverse current situation. It's about the same voltage. And it is, say, one volt uh, approximately. So the power associated here uh, with this uh, diode is uh, small. So where th does this power go? Well, as we'll see in a few minutes, there is a resonance circuit here, and there are some losses asso associated with the a parasitic resistance of this resonant circuit. So this power is actually lost and uh, to, of course, heat. And uh, this is something you have to worry about. And also, uh, as we will see, there is an EMI issue, electromagnetic interference um, caused by this oscillatory type of a uh, phenomenon. Another point to make is that a power MOSFET transistor does have a body diode. It's built in, it's not something that is connected to it, it's just part of the construction. And unfortunately, this diode 
is slow dial. That is, it has a long reverse recovery time, so uh, there'll be a lot of cur reverse current. Uh, the peak reverse current will be high and the amount of charge will be large. So this may cause some problems in various situations. And I'm bringing here just an example uh, of a synchronous back converter. Now in a regular back converter, you have a transistor, you have a dial. When the transistor is off, you have a current flowing through this dial. Now for low voltage application, in the case of the output is low voltage, say five volt, the voltage drop on the dial uh, will cause a appreciable amount of power uh, that will be dissipated and efficiency uh, will go down. So, so a way to overcome this would be to put here a transistor. So either Q1 is on or Q2 is on. And when Q2 is on, the current is flowing through the transistor. And if the RDS on is uh, small, the voltage drop will be small and therefore the power dissipation will be small. However, once Q2 is turned off, and of course you cannot turn on Q1 at the same time, you have to wait for a certain delay so the two will not be conducting together, then you'll have a short. So Q2 is turned off, then the current will find its way through the diode, okay? And then after some delay, when Q1 is turned on, you have here a reverse voltage imposed on the diode. So here you have here the reverse recovery problem. So we find that in many applications, this body diode causes a lot of trouble. To remedy this, you can put a fast diode with a short recovery time in parallel to this body diode. However, for this diode to really help, the voltage drop on it should be smaller than the voltage drop on the body diode. Unfortunately, the voltage drop on the body diode is fairly small. It's about 600, 700 millivolts in some cases. So if you just put a silicon fast diode, which has normally a voltage drop of say one volt and above, it will not help. You can put a Schottky diode, a silicon Schottky diode, uh, because the voltage drop is really small on a Schottky diode. We'll talk about it a little bit later. And this will really help the situation because then the current will actually prefer to go through the Schottky diode rather than the body diode. However, Schottky diodes, uh, silicon Schottky diodes are available up to 100 volts. So above that, you cannot use a silicon Schottky diode. Okay, we'll talk about this a little bit later. Now, another issue that has to be taken into account is the way the recovery is happening. We can have a soft recovery and we can have an abrupt or fast recovery or hard recovery. And the difference is that when the IDT here is very fast, then there'll be a high voltage imposed on the leakage inductances. So you'd prefer to have a soft recovery. And here what happens uh, due to the, the IDT of the recovery. What we see here again is this reverse current, which is now dying out. This is the voltage drop on the diode. This is when in the forward direction. This is in the reverse direction. And as I've said, the voltage drop is about the same here the current drops to zero, the IDT is causing this high voltage to generate. And now if the diode is not conducting, you have here really a resonant circuit. This is the capacitance of the diode when it's in the off state. And this resonant circuit, of course, we'll call this oscillation. And so you have two problems. One is the very high reverse voltage on the diode which may cause actually a breakdown. So you have to protect the diode. We'll talk it in, about it in a minute. And then you have these oscillations which are causing EMI, electromagnetic interference. So this is a real problem that one has to deal with. Now to arrest these oscillations, what one can do and to uh, clamp the 
high reverse voltage one can use a uh, RC snubber this is a dissipating snubber and the idea here is that if you have a reverse current and then if the current drops to zero, zero you have any sort of a bypass for the current to flow and so that there is no interruption of the current it will continue flowing in this direction okay now there are some power uh, values associated here this is the power or the energy stored in the capacitor times frequency is the power and this is the maximum power that you have stored in the stray inductances this is the peak current reverse current and this is the leakage so this is the amount of power associated with the um, leakage inductances now if you equate these two you can get an uh, approximation for the capacitance that you need to put here in order to absorb this uh, energy now this is usually a first order approximation in fact you can also get a value for r r has to be small enough so when the diode is conducting this circuit will uh, discharge ready for the next cycle now as i've said this is just a first step because uh, you don't really know exactly what is the leakage you don't know exactly what is the reverse peak current so you start with this and then unfortunately you have to go through some uh, trial and error process in order to optimize the circuit and don't forget that you have to take into account that at high temperature uh, the situation is worse you have a higher peak current and therefore you have to prepare for this situation another issue is the peak current which is flowing through the dial which might uh, damage the transistor if it is too high so to sort of damp it out or lower it you can put an inductor which is increasing uh, or lowering the rate of the idt and therefore the peak reverse current will be lower however there's an energy now stored in this inductor so this is actually a flyback type of arrangement that this uh, energy is then uh, pumped back either to the output or to the input depending on the uh, topology unfortunately there are some leakage uh, issues between primary and secondary leakage inductances uh, which by themselves are causing some problems uh, this, is, this solution is bulky and it's really not suitable for high frequency maybe up to 100 kilohertz or maybe 50 kilohertz above that uh, you lose more than you actually gain now the best way to combat the problem of uh, reverse recovery is actually to use soft switching and I'm showing here a resonant converter this is L and C it's a resonant part of a network re is actually representing the load uh, there might be a transformer a rectifier and this is reflecting everything to the primary and representing the load by a equivalent uh, rac as it's called uh, just a resistor to represent the loading okay we have a full bridge here and i'm showing here the case in which q1 and q4 are conducting okay we have current flowing this direction and now uh, we are walking at a frequency which is higher than the uh, resonant frequency so therefore the current is lagging i can see it here because as q4 say q4 is turned off there's still current there's still current here okay so i'm turning off q4 and q1 once I do that, the current, of course, will continue because of this uh, resonant circuit. So we'll have a situation now that there will be a current through this diode, reverse current. And as this transistor Q4 is turned off, this voltage here will commutate and actually will go up until this diode will conduct. And here I'm showing this 
a brief period that you'll have a reverse current and then the current will find its way uh, from here back and through this dial. So we have a reverse recovery but it's really not causing any problem because it is pulled by this uh, resonant circuit and after a while it'll die out and that's it and the voltage will so drop by the fact that there is still current uh, charging or discharging these uh, parasitic uh, or added capacitor and the diode will start conduct. So this diode will conduct and this diode will conduct. Now we can turn Q3 and Q2 under zero voltage condition which is of course very nice. So this soft switching uh, scheme will both solve the problem of the reverse recovery and also uh, will provide uh, a situation uh, in which the transistor is turned on at zero voltage switching which of course is very nice. Another approach uh, to combat the problem of reverse recovery would be to use an inductor which is wound on a amorphous or saturable reactor or core. Now this uh, amorphous material or magnetic material will have an hysteresis of this nature. We have here a steep uh, permeability, a high permeability section. So the inductance here is high and then we have a saturation. So the inductance is very low. So if we start with this point where the saturation occurs, uh, low inductance, we go to a lower current which is uh, lower magnetic field and eventually we will hit again high inductance and this is uh, the phenomena that can be used in order to uh, lower the peak reverse current and here is how we can do it we put this reactor in series with the diode so when this uh, diode is conducting uh, we have a saturation of this element and there is no uh, effect in, uh, on the circuit. Now when the voltage is reversing the current will start dying and then we'll hit this high, um, high part of inductance. So this will uh, reduce the peak reverse current by lowering the rate at which the current is changing and therefore it will ease the problem. So here is a simulation of the situation. We see the forward current, we see how the current, reverse current is slowly uh, building up and then it'll recover and the diode voltage is uh, sort of uh, damped out and we don't have these uh, high frequency uh, oscillations. Finally, let me talk about Schottky diodes. Now a Schottky diode is a diode between a metal and a semiconductor. Um, a Schottky diode does not have reverse recovery because there is no stored charge in a junction. However, it has capacitance of the junction and therefore there will be some reverse current but this is not a uh, reverse recovery phenomena, it's just a current due to this capacitance. Now, Silicon Schottky diodes uh, can be made up to, let's say, 100 volt, a little bit more. But a new generation of devices is the silicon carbide uh, Schottky. It should be Schottky, I'm sorry. Um, and they can be uh, to, made to high voltage, 1000 volt and even higher. So here is a comparison uh, by, presented by ST of different diode. This is the IDT of the circuit. This is of course current and this is time. Now the blue one is a simple diode, a basic diode. You see a long reverse recovery time. You have a high peak reverse current. The red one is an ultra fast diode made by ST and by many other vendors which has a much shorter recovery time and a much lower uh, peak reversing current. The black one is the silicon carbon diode and as you can see uh, there is some wiggling here but this is not a reverse recovery this is just uh, due to the 
uh, current through this capacitance, and of course, uh, we just about don't see any reverse current uh, in this case. Now, you can use this silicon carbide diode in order to solve the problem of the body diode that I've mentioned earlier. Now, here is a circuit that you can use. Uh, you need a, a forward diode here, which is the same direction as the transistor is conducting. And then you need a, this silicon car, uh, carbide diode in parallel. Now, the idea here is that when this transistor is conducting, you have a current going this direction. Now, when there is a reverse current, it doesn't go through the diode because the body diode, because there is a diode here in the reverse direction, it'll go through this silicon carbide diode. Now, obviously, there's some power dissipation, extra power dissipation associated here, but that's not too bad if the uh, power level is high, there's a high voltage, and the a drop on this diode is maybe not that high as compared to the uh, voltages in the circuit. Now, this actually brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it interesting and that it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you.